In this video, I'm going to use the collection service so my NPC knows who an enemy is and who is a friend. So Chuck Norris is, isn't bothering me at all, but what happens if I shoot him? Bruh! He's going to get me. Bam! And I am an enemy. He's going to keep coming for me. I didn't turn it off. I thought that would be pretty cool though. Let's go ahead and get started. I made Chuck available on the marketplace. You can go to this URL, I'll put it in the description, hit the green cat button, and you'll have him. He basically just attacks anything within 50 studs, right, of with a humanoid root part. Um, and you're gonna have to save off the animation. I put it in the model, I'll show you how to do that. Let's see, we're also gonna use the simple pistol, but I added the creator tag code to keep track of kills and deaths. We're gonna use that to see who shot Chuck. So if you don't have it, hit that green get button and that'll put it in your toolbox too. Now let's go to the toolbox in our empty world. I have an empty base plate. Go to the toolbox and I get Chuck. There we go, three scripts. Yep. And I'm gonna get the simple pistol with the creator tag, drag that in. Yep. There we go. Let's get our simple pistol, we'll put it down in the starter pack. All right, now with Chuck, we need to save off the animation, All right? So let's open Chuck up and the animation, the ID that we're gonna be using is in this kick anim under the move NPC script, but I have the anim keyframes here under anim saves. Open that up, right click where it says kick Save to Roblox, all right, just hit Submit. Get that ID, close your window. Under Move NPC, select the kick animation, that's the one the script is using, and you have to put that new ID in here, Control V, that's your ID. You'll be able to use this in your game, and so will everybody who can play it. So uh, otherwise, the kick animation is not going to fire. It's saved under my account. So our objective is to get Chuck to only chase after his enemies. Let's grab a drooling zombie or whatever monster you like. And yep. And I'll also just put like a dummy out here too. Let's go to avatar, rig builder. We'll do R6, change it up a bit, right? There we go. I always use R15s. Now, if we play the game, Chuck's gonna run after these guys because they are on the first level of the game, right? They're right under the workspace. That's what Chuck's looking for. We'll look at the script. But we want Chuck to go after people we say is his enemy, right? The game creator says it's his enemy or he'll have some AI to determine an enemy if you hurt him. We're gonna need the collection service and the tag editor. Let's go ahead and Click on, uh, I right clicked up here on the banner and I'm just gonna grab the tag editor that way because sometimes I have trouble finding it. There you go, tag editor. Now you'll notice with the drooling zombie, there's tags here, right? We have the soldier enemy and the zombie friend. Um, here we don't have anything on him, right? But we wanna create a tag. Let's create a tag. Let's hit new tag and we're gonna make this Chuck target. All right, now anything that we select and we click on becomes a Chuck target. If we go to the drooling zombie, notice that is not a Chuck target, even though we selected them. Let's go ahead and select them. All right, now we need to change his attack script to look for Chuck targets instead of just the humanoid root part that's within a certain distance of Chuck. Let's close our tag editor for now. And we'll open up Chuck, take a look at his move NPC. And you will see me use something very similar to this in almost all my NPC stuff. Sometimes I have ray casting to make sure he can see his target. But what I do, I go through all of the children in the workspace, look for humanoid root parts, and then that's how I determine what I'm gonna attack. Not very flexible, not very efficient, but it's a good starting point. Let's go ahead and look for the tagged stuff, the tagged enemies. But I'm gonna need the collection service. 
let's go up to the top of this script where our variables are and get our collection service. I'll say local, I'll just call it CS for collection service equals game colon get service collection service. And we'll go back to our find nearest char and then right underneath here, right before the for loop, before we start going through things, I am going to look for our targets. I'm going to say local targets equal collection service colon get tagged. Make sure you don't have get tags, right? Get tagged, right? That's the objects that are tagged. And we're going to put in the name of the tag, which is Chuck target. Make sure you spell it right. Chuck target. Nice. Now down here, all we got to do is make that the targets table. So whatever gets returned in here, we're going to chase that. We're going to look for it to see how close they are. Then we're going to chase after them. The closest one is going to be the target that we're going to shoot for. Oh, let's unanchor our dummy so that he goes flying. So I'll hit the dummy right here. Select the dummy right here. Go to humanoid root part and uncheck anchored. Now let's play it and see. He's going to go after the dummy because he's slightly closer. He'll kick him and then he'll chase him for a little while and then stop. Boom. He didn't chase him at all. And he kicked the, kicked the zombie, but he's not kicking me. So I'm back in my move NPC script. I turned off the game. We're going to leverage the creator tag stuff in my weapon, right? And if, if you're not familiar, go to the pistol and then damage. I added creator tag functions. I got these right from the Roblox sword. It's a very popular way of crediting kills and keeping track of them, right? So as soon as you go to damage somebody, right before that, you untag anybody else who touched the humanoid, and then you tag them with your stuff. You get credit for the kill if they die within two seconds. All right, the creator tag is called creator. So we got to keep that in mind. We're going to go back to our move NPC. That's what I clicked. If you didn't see it, find nearest char. And I'm going to put that right underneath because they're kind of related. So Chuck has an AI humanoid declared up top, up on the top of the script. We're going to look for the health changed event, connect that to an anonymous function, the value of the, the new value of the health will come through. We don't care. We're looking for a creator tag. We'll say a local CT for creator tag. Check is humanoid. Check Chuck's humanoid. We'll do a find first child. Remember, it's called creator. Don't call it anything else. You'll just make problems for yourself. If CT, then we're going to get the player that did the damage and that is on the CT value, the creator tag value. But we want to put our um, collection service tag on the character. So let's get the character from the player. Player.character or player.character added weight. And we'll get the collection service. I call that CS. Add tag to the char, add the name of the tag. So you can put a lot of different tags on a, on a, on a character. We'll do Chuck target. All right, now let's try it out. We, if we change Chuck's health with that simple pistol that has a creator tag on it, he's going to come after us. He's going to, he's going to think we're a target. He's going to be right. Brah. There we go. We got it. That's pretty cool. If we get close, he's going to come after us again. He's never going to forget because I didn't write the code for it.